My name's Kenny Dial, and welcome to Season 2 of the Scuba Diving Podcast. Someone messaged me recently and said, hey, I'm nervous about next weekend. The swim test was really hard for open water scuba diving. The instructor already failed a lady on the 275-yard swim. I'm like, mm-hmm. huh? Quick interjection here for all my viewers and listeners. All the agencies, Naui, Patty, SSI, whoever, have to follow the Autonomous Diver ISO 24801-2 standard. It's for the main open water autonomous diver scuba diver certification. The main one. That standard allows all the legitimate agencies to talk to each other and have that global acceptance and the ability for any agency to recognize the other one. Basically, the ISO standard makes them all legit. They all have to follow that as a minimum. Now, each agency may add to that or go beyond that, and that's totally up to them. However, the minimum standard is that every student should be able to do a five-minute survival swim slash float without the use of mass, fin, snorkel, or other swimming aids. But for the actual swim test, distant swimming capability by one of the two following methods. Swim 200 meters without the use of mass, fin, snorkel, or other swimming aid or, now I repeat, or swim 300 meters using mass fins and snorkel without other swimming aids. Meaning, you can do the 300 meter mass fin snorkel swim and there is no swim test at all. It also goes further to say if conditions warrant, students may wear a diving suit provided they are weighted for neutral buoyancy. Also notice there is no time limit on these. I hope that clears things up just a little bit and now back to the show. I think what bothered me about that is failing someone in the swim test, especially if you make it longer or you're using one of the old standards. An instructor failed one of the students because they couldn't do a 275 yard swim test to become an open water scuba diver. And it terrified everybody else. I can't help but be annoyed by that because at least in most of the standards, that is not a requirement. It's an old requirement that many people can still hold people to. But in this case, you're making it a rite of passage. It's not boot camp. There shouldn't be a whole long list of reasons to fail people in open water. No. I think your job as an instructor should be try and reasonably get them certified. Now, obviously, there's things that can't be overlooked. For good, I think the industry has shifted as the old school, hard leg, boot camp style, I had to swim this far and all that stuff. They've virtually almost eliminated swim tests. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing because for open water scuba, as long as you're not going beyond what you were trained in and you're keeping it simple, there's a lot of people that just dive in springs or go to aquariums or do really nice tropical locations where it's calm. You don't need to be a Navy SEAL. True. But I think instructors need to see if there's a way you can lift that person up versus really just disqualifying them just oh you didn't quite swim fast enough i think it's getting better as i hate to say it but that is dying out Mm -hmm. um, and it's more of a supportive role than a pass or fail right well Um, i I will say this i agree with part of it i kind of disagree with part of it the part i disagree with is I, i like the swim test but not in the way that whatever this instructor did it even when i was doing it and this was 1993 when i was doing my swim test i know when you were doing your stuff because your garage the gear in your garage you weren't even alive then you're trying to throw me off yeah i'm trying to throw you off because this is no setup your your gear in your garage sitting here (laughs) saying i got a good point hey they're helping you out over there yeah i know i got the gear in your garage indicates that's when you started diving around the mid 90s right right anyway no my point is even then the instructor i had was a good instructor he did not try and fail anyone in fact his he said i'm going to get everyone to pass if you don't pass it on the first time that's okay i'm gonna work with you we're gonna get through this we're gonna we're gonna figure this thing out the reason why i do like the swim test is is not because you're going to get yourself intentionally in that situation, but I've been in a situation where I, and we've discussed it, where I could have gotten away from a boat and would have had to survive on the surface. Now, I had scuba gear with me and all that, but what if there's a hole in the BC, I gotta drop the tank, whatever. Being able to survive is an important part. That does not mean you have to be a Navy SEAL, and there is a distinction, and this is probably where our overlap is. Yeah. You don't have to be a Navy SEAL, but you do want the person to be to have the confidence because anyone can do that. Anyone can do that because there's no time limit. Like I, there may used to have been time limits. I do not agree with the time limit because the whole point is to say, can you survive this? Can you come back to the boat if you had to ditch your gear and no one's around? Exactly. Or through the shore. Exactly. And that's all. And th- and that's where I think I, I wholeheartedly agree that anyone can do that. 
you just work with them low. There's no reason to fail someone for that. Generally, it's one of those things, and ironically, this is like the Navy SEALs. Generally, if someone is going to quit, they're going to quit on their own. Like, an instructor should almost never have to fail someone. If someone just says, look, I've done this, I've tried, it's just not for me, then that happens sometimes. And, and, and there are folks who just, it's not for them. I think that's very rare, and I think that is few and far between, and I think most good instructors will you, say, let's give it a shot and let's see how far we can go, and, and maybe it'll start to get easier. Almost every time I've seen somebody that couldn't do the very basic skills, yeah. which, like you said, is extremely rare, Right. it was somebody dragged into it. Yes. And they, they never really wanted to do it in the first place, and they're just like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I've never seen because anybody that wanted to be there that didn't pass. And, and here's the reason why, and this is a simple test to show how easy the skills are that we do underwater. The hardest skill that we do, and I say hardest in terms of psychologically hard, it's not physically difficult, but it's psychologically hard, is clearing your mask. Have someone clear their mask in the classroom before they ever get in the water. Go through what the actual skill is. Every single person will get it on the first or at the most second time. The problem is they're not comfortable in the water. If you can get people comfortable in the water, those skills are all cake. Because everybody goes, oh, it's, it's hard to clear your mask. No, no, no. It's not hard to clear your mask. It's hard to be comfortable underwater. Once you get comfortable underwater, clearing your mask is the easiest thing in the world. Bingo. I make them get bored they're so comfortable yes. before I Absolutely. move into that stuff. Yep. Where they're hanging upside and half of them, by the end of it, have already figured out how to clear right. it. And they're doing it inadvertently. <laughs> yes. Um, or they'll pop up and go, yeah, I got water in my mask. How do I get that out? Oh, you just, you know, and yeah. you go, but they're like, oh, okay. Yep. And they yeah, keep, once they're comfortable. We haven't even the gotten to it. Because that comfort level's there, the skills fall in the like dominoes. Yes. Yeah, the skills are easy once they're once they're comfortable in the water. Thanks for listening or watching if you're on one of the supported video platforms. If you want all things Sweetwater, like a signed copy of my children's book, merch like this shirt or the hat, online courses, or if you want to advertise for your dive facility, if you just want to follow us, go to sweetwaterscuba.com. You can follow my TikTok at Kenny underscore dial, K-E-N-N-Y underscore D-Y-A-L. Our Instagram account, sweetwater underscore scuba. Of course, the down to 60 channels on all major platforms and everything else we're doing to lift the underwater wool. Thanks for being here and let's show the rest of the world, the rest of the world.